First, we'll just like to open with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father God, um, we are so grateful that we can be here this morning in all the various places that we are. Um, Lord, wherever we are, you know where, exactly where we are. Um, you know where we are physically, you know where we are emotionally and mentally. Um, Father, you, you have placed a strong desire in our heart for you and for love. And um, Lord, you are the ultimate fulfillment of that desire for love. Uh, Father, we, we just pray now this morning that, or this afternoon, that we would um, learn more of your love and draw closer to you um, have a, a clearer hope and a clearer purpose. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to swap over to the screen sharing. Glenn does a very good job of multitasking. I'll try my best. Um, so just give me a moment. I don't know, could everyone see the, the screen sharing? Yes, it looks good. Thanks, Cam. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. Okay. So I'd like for you to all join me in a bit of an imagination game. Um, and we're going to picture a world, uh, but a world that is very different to the one that we currently live in. Um, the world is shaped like a sphere, just like our own. It orbits the sun, just like our own. It has 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, and 365 days in a year, all just like our own. It has people, just like our own. But these people are very close to each other. Some are even standing right next to each other. Some are even greeting each other with hugs, with audacity. Many of these people are smiling. Many of them are neutral. Many of them are sad. But the, the strangest part of this world is that we're actually able to see that. Um, their expressions aren't covered by masks. These people plan events and they travel. They have this strange certainty that things will remain constant for more than two weeks in advance. The world has shops, churches, gyms, restaurants, just like our own. But the people whose faces are exposed seem to be allowed to walk in whatever their temperature. In fact, nobody even records their temperature. And perhaps this world looks even more different to you. Perhaps it is a world where you had a job. Perhaps it is a world where you had a particular family member. This imagination game was by no means intended to remind us yet again that we are living amidst a pandemic. Um, we all know that. I think we're tired of knowing that. And in fact, we probably, we may even be a little bit flustered to think that we're hearing a sermon about that. Um, it wasn't intended to generate discontent and anxiety. Um, and it is by no means saying that our lives and world are devoid of joy and beauty at the moment. No, not at all. Um, the, the purpose of the the imagination game was simply to remind us of how abnormal this normal really is in case we've become accustomed to it. And though it's been the case for all generations in the past, it is painted very vividly how a lot of things in this world that we live in are uncomfortable and how it leaves a lot of our thirsting unquenched. And it shows us how if the only place that we know as home can't fully supply all our heart's yearnings, that there must be something more out there. This illustration was to show us that we are aliens. Um, sorry, I'd just like to, uh, I'd just like to know, um, is, the, is the slideshow visible or is my face visible? Sorry to be, to interrupt like this. Mike.
case, I can see the slideshow uh, and then just a small video of you. So if people have um, the speaker view, then that's what they'll be seeing. Okay, I think I just need to pretty stop that for a bit. So I'm uh, navigating between, between the two. Forgive me. So the illustration showed that we are, we are aliens. Um, and I can maybe see some of you reaching for the leave meeting button, but before you do that, just hear me out. So um, alien is defined as a foreigner living in a place without the right of citizenship. And I'd like to put it to you today that we all are to some extent foreigners on this planet without the right of citizen, citizenship, or to put it differently, we are foreigners, strangers, sojourners or pilgrims on the earth. Um, and the purpose of the message is to give us two clear things to take away with this in mind. Firstly, what our mindset um, should be, and secondly, what our purpose should be. So we're going to look at two passage, uh, passage, passages from the Bible to illuminate this subject for us. Um, and the first one of these is from uh, Hebrews 11, which I'm going to share with us now. Okay, um, Hebrews is a book found near the end of the Bible, um, and it's written by a man called Paul, um, and he calls himself a messenger for Jesus Christ. Um, the passage says, all these people, people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So um, a summary thought to take from this passage um, is that these people uh, being referred to were the, who were mothers and fathers of, of, of the faith in the Old Testament of the Bible, they saw themselves as pilgrims on the earth, uh, looking forward to a heavenly home. Um, they knew that in this home, uh, in this home, the one promised to them, who is Jesus Christ, would restore all things to perfection. Um, the second passage um, that we're going to be looking at is first is found in First Peter, and that is going to launch us into the practical handling of what it means to be called a so-called alien. Um, so um, it's First Peter two, verse eleven to twelve. And this book was written by Peter, uh, one of Jesus's closest followers. And I'll be reading that for us now. It says, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans or unbelievers that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. So um, two words were used in the above passage, which to me were so similar that I, I really struggled to differentiate the nuances that they had. Um, and so I looked into the definitions and the, the definition of the word translated sojourner in the above passage is stranger, foreigner, one who lives in a place without the right of citizenship. Um, the second one is pilgrim, and that is one who comes from a foreign country or land to reside there by the side of the natives, native citizens. And maybe it'll help if I share if I show that just so you see. Um, so the, the things that stood out to me were the citizenship for sojourner, and the second one was. Um, to reside there by the side of the native citizens for a pilgrim. So, um, sorry. Um, then when I saw these definitions, um, the differences between them, or the penny finally dropped for the differences between them. Um, so firstly, the first word shows our mindset, whereas the second shows our purpose. So um, on the first point, 
um, our, is our heavenly citizenship. We don't hold citizenship on earth. We hold it in heaven. Um, and this shows our, our heavenly focus. Um, so it helps a lot being, as Glenn mentioned, um, living in Lesotho. Um, this is obviously, well, not obviously, but this is a country where I don't hold citizenship. Um, and it's really helped me to understand this concept. Um, so I'm living in Lesotho now, and I'm allowed to live in Lesotho now, but I'm not allowed to live here as long as I please. Um, I'm actually only allowed to stay for as long as I'm working in the current capacity uh, that my work permit states. Um, I don't have the rights of a citizen. Um, I can't own land. I can't uh, start a business easily, I don't think. Um, so when I plan for the medium or the long term, Lesotho isn't on my cards. My country of citizenship is. And that's how the link fits in spiritually. Um, and there's a verse in Philippians 3, verse 20, that says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So having a, a heavenly mindset means realizing that this earth will have its discomforts, and we shouldn't be surprised or discouraged by them. Because Jesus didn't promise that our time on earth would be comfortable. He promised that he would be with us through all of it and that he's busy building us a mansion where we hold citizenship. Uh, he promised that he is going to recreate the earth and remove every trace of pain, suffering, and fear from it. In this earth, peace will reign between every single inhabitant. So personally, COVID uh, revealed to me in a very big way how I thought I grasped this concept, but I clearly didn't quite fully. Um, I mean, things like freedom of movement, seeing loved ones frequently, job security, living with a, a fair degree of constancy, um, and taking for granted that a flight I booked now uh, won't become obsolete in two weeks time. Losing these things makes life a little bit uncomfortable, more than a little bit uncomfortable. But when many of our comforts and dependencies, though natural and healthy, are taken away, would we be content with Jesus only? and with the hope of our heavenly citizenship. Um, also, heavenly mindset means that when we live and we conduct ourselves, our mindset and our paradigm for all, all things should be God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, we don't want to waste time with short-term investments in sinful desires and our, our short stay on earth when it takes big cuts from our long-term investment in our home, our eternal home, heaven. Um, and just at this point, I'm using the word heaven a lot, and um, as Lynn really well explained in the children's story, um, it's, um, I will go into in detail a bit more about this word that we just throw around heaven, um, but just to put out there, it's not an obscure location on a cloud where we, we might sit and play harps. Um, there's, there's a lot more, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll dig into that a bit later. So that was our first the first point that we took, uh, the heavenly mindset. And then the second point is the earthly purpose. And this truly was an amazing point. I really, my mind was really blown when I saw this and I really loved it when it came out so well through the second definition. Um, so Pilgrim, just to remind you says, one who comes from a foreign country or land to reside there by the side of the native citizens. That that just gives me a picture of coming close to those around us, pitching our tents next to theirs and inviting them to see this amazing city where we hold citizen, citizenship. And it really can't be more beautifully exemplified than by Jesus coming to earth. He was God in the flesh, willing to lay aside his godness uh, to associate with and rescue this, this human race um, from eternal separation from God. And um, there, there's a quote from one of the founders of this church, Ellen White, that su summarizes this thought magnificently for me, um, which I'm gonna share now. Um, if you just allow me to skip these. It says, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with people as one who desired their good. He showed sympathy for them, ministered to their, to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he invited them, follow me. 
She goes on to say, we need to come close to the people by personal effort. If we would give less time to sermonizing and more time to personal ministry, greater results would be seen. The poor are to be relieved, the sick cared for, the sorrowing and the bereaved comforted, the ignorant instructed, the inexperienced counseled. We are to weep with those who weep and to rejoice with those who rejoice. Accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of the love of God, this work will not, cannot be without fruit. So being a spiritual alien does, is not about being an exclusive hermit who wants nothing to do with those around them. Um, it's about focusing our mind on Christ's eternal kingdom and following his example of loving and reaching out to those around him uh, who we find ourselves around. Um, so at this point, um, you might be having some, you might have some questions or uncertainties. Firstly, you might have noticed that these verses were written way before COVID existed. So how is it applicable to us now then? Um, and COVID is just a very good example um, and has been a catalyst, at least for me personally, to become brutally aware of the reality um, that has existed since man alienated themselves from God. Um, you might also be thinking, well, that's great. These quotes are from the Bible, but I'm not so sure about the Bible at this stage. Um, and there's a, there's a well-repeated quotation that goes something along these lines. It says, the fact that our hearts, the fact that our hearts yearn for something earth can't supply is proof that heaven must be our home. So there's a, a longing in each of us, which I think we can all agree, agree with. Um, and it's made very apparent by our lowest life experiences uh, for something that this earth can't supply. Um, we long for connection and we long for stability. Um, or you might even be thinking, well, COVID isn't bothering me or interfering with my life that much right now. Um, I actually like working from home and don't mind saving money on fuel. And as I mentioned before, COVID is just an example, but there are countless other things that will not exist in God's eternal home of peace and joy, uh, something stolen, a broken relationship, a tragic death. So as we started with an imagination game, I'd like to end with one. And uh, we are gonna picture a world, but a world very different to the one we live in. This world is shaped like a sphere, just like our own. It orbits the sun, just like our own. It has 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, and 365 days in a year, all just like our own. It has people just like our own, but all of these people are happy. None of them are neutral, none of them are sad, but why? God's tent is with men and he will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the old things have passed away. That is taken from the book of Revelation in the Bible. But the strangest thing is that this peace exists among the citizens of, the, of this kingdom, even though it is a mixture of every nationality, language, and people group. What a strange thing to witness. These people are going about their work, but they don't do so with fear of sudden calamity. In fact, they don't have any fear. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with a goat, the calf and the lion and the kid together, and a little child will lead them. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put his hand in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And although the sun has, although this earth has a sun uh, around which it orbits, there's no need for light because there is no night there. God himself is their light. And this imagination is no fantasy. It is a promise from God, which is found in his word. He promises that he will make a new heaven and a new earth free from everything that is bad, which will be our eternal home. 
So I'm not sure um, where you are personally at right now, um, but God does and you do. Um, perhaps you, you feel a thirst um, right now that you haven't been able to quench it um, and you want to apply for, if you want to call it permanent residence or permanent citizenship in God's kingdom. Um, that citizenship isn't one that you have to go to immigration for and wait weeks for, months for. It's instantaneous. Um, perhaps realizing that you are experiencing the natural letdowns of an imperfect world, you want to reestablish as, uh, Jesus as your only joy and consolation. Behold, God says, I make all things new. So um, as we close our eyes to pray, I'd just like to give us um, each a minute or two before I start speaking to just open your heart to God um, and in your own way, where you are at in your own space, um, just um, give, give your heart to him in the way that you, you want to based on this message. So um, as we close our eyes, please do so. Father God, as we sit here this morning, we are so joyful at the, the hope that you've put within reach of every single one of us. Lord, you have made a way through Jesus Christ to have citizenship in a kingdom that has no requirements but belief. Lord, we, we do not have to match a certain um, demographic. We do not have to meet all sorts of criteria that we we have to meet on earth to get citizenship, Lord, you, you make the way wide open. And Lord, your kingdom is one that has no faults in it. It has no, no pain, no sorrow, no distance, no conflict. It has perfect stability, perfect connection. Lord, we will be with you face to face, you will personally wipe the tears from our eyes and you will be our God. And Lord, um, we want to recommit to you this day, our lives um, in, in some instances. Lord, we want to just acknowledge that if everything else is taken away, we have you and that is, that is enough. Uh, Lord, we want to, perhaps we want to commit our lives to you and Asked to be part of this kingdom, um, realizing that uh, we are we are let down constantly on earth, and um, Father, we just want to give our give our lives to you and let you take control completely. Father, perhaps we feel we are falling so far short of our earthly purpose of of being the one that lives beside um, these the, the residents of earth and loving and reaching out and laying down our lives for them as, as you laid down your life for us. And we, w we wish to ask for your, your strength. Um, we ask that the Holy Spirit would, would lead us in every decision that we would like to make right now um, and that you would, you would give us the power to will and to do your good pleasure. Our Father, we, we pray for your, your protection over us um, and your, your angels to guard us from the attempts of the devil to distract us from this, this purpose and this goal. Um, and Lord, we, we really look forward to seeing your kingdom one day and we pray that we'll um, share this with as many people as we can. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.